Hi guys, here is your lesson for Wednesday, April 22nd. First, we're going to talk about electric cars because you did a reading on that yesterday. Many of you have heard of electric cars because they are not run on gas, they have to be charged. You all know that my favorite car is a Tesla and they are electric cars. What makes an electric car move is an electric motor that is way bigger than this. And the way to get it to continuously move is to recharge it. So they have to be connected to some kind of electrical outlet. Electromagnets, electric motors, and generators are technologies that make electric cars work. When you apply the brakes in a traditional car, the brake pads heat up as they rub against the wheels and apply friction to slow the car. The kinetic energy of the car transfers to heat energy, so it transfers to the environment. It is lost. In an electric car, this kinetic energy is not all lost. When you brake the car's electric motors can work as generators. These generators can transfer some of the kinetic energy to electrical energy, which is then stored as potential energy in the car's battery. That battery can be used to power the motor of the car. Engineers are always looking for ways like this to improve the energy efficiency of a car. Some questions you might have are, is when the electric car is plugged in, where is that electricity coming from? And that electricity is coming from utility companies that provide us with electricity. Where do utility companies get their electricity? That's a good question. Utility companies actually don't create their own energy. They have to try to find energy, kind of like what we did with the hand crank generator. They ultimately have to transfer the energy themselves. One of the prime energies that people use are found in fossil fuels. So they're either gas or coal. The fuel burns, that energy gets transferred. Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources. So that means that they take millions of years to come together. And once they're all used up, we're going to have to find some other type of electricity source. You guys should know a little bit about non-renewable and renewable resources because you did that in your electricity packet. Also, you've learned about that in previous classes. What are some real life applications where environmental kinetic energy gets transferred into electrical energy? So in other words, what are some renewable resources that get created by our environment? Energy sources that we see quite a bit are like wind power, steam, solar. Energy from the wind blowing, water flowing, ocean waves, and steam from volcanic vents are examples of natural kinetic energy sources that can be harnessed to generate electricity. That electricity can power factories or homes and do anything you might typically want from a source of electricity. This is called renewable energy because the wind and water flow are not used up. They are constantly recurring. There are actually ways that we can reduce the amount of non-renewable resources that we use by trying to use less energy in general. An example is an incandescent light bulb. It takes way more energy than an LED light bulb. So there's different types of things that we can replace and fix. I'm going to talk more specifically about solar energy. And here is a solar panel. This is a very tiny one. I'm sure you've seen solar panel farms, which have like a lot of solar panels on them and they're massive. They're also very expensive, but it is a form of renewable energy. So solar cells take advantage of the properties of silicon, an element to transfer light energy from the sun into electrical energy. This energy can be used just like any other electric source. I have been charging this solar panel for a few days now. I put it in the window hoping that the energy from the sun would transfer into the solar cell. So we're going to see if this works when I hook it up to the motor. So we have some different wires here that are connected that I will connect to the wires of the motor. There's a positive and a negative side. I think you can see the negative because there's all these red. The positive really doesn't have much on it. I show you the solar cell slash motor circuit. You're going to label the diagram and show the energy source and transfers. So the energy source is where is that energy coming from? 
So it's obviously coming from some kind of light source or the sun. So you want to draw like a light bulb or a sun somewhere on your page. Then the solar panels with the wires, the positive and negative. Make sure you label what you're doing. Then we're going to hook it up to the motor. We have two wires. Make sure you label the cap and the casing. We know inside of it, there is the shaft, the commutator, and the electromagnets. I have everything connected, but it's not seeming to work. Um, right now, there's not a lot of sun outside, so I will try again later. But I'm going to put a link on slide 9 that also shows how solar panels work, so you can see. Our last lesson for this notebook will be on Friday, April 24th. And we're almost done with this notebook, so good job. Keep up the good work. There will be some vocab and content on Friday. Not a lot, not compared to Monday's lesson. Um, next week, you're going to watch a video and on Monday. And then on Tuesday, you're going to do another reading. Where do we get energy? And then Wednesday, you're going to actually do your big question. Once we're done with this notebook, you're going to do a really fun project that is all about creating a house with renewable resources. So I can't wait to see what you come up with.